And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. Welcome to Space. Welcome to the Smash News Network. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. We've got a dip in solar activity here over the past uh, 24 hours. Radio flux down to 108 solar flux units. Let's cut back to the 131 Angstrom's view from the GO-16 SUVI. There is a C-Class flare showing up in here. It was the largest flare of the past 24 hours, just showing up at a at a perfect time. Let us know in the comments if you think, if you think it's divine providence or just luck. As here at the Smash News Network, least busted name of news, we believe that there's nothing random in the universe and that, well, there's no such thing as luck. Luck is simply an attempt by mankind to explain the random apparent chaos, the apparent random chaos in his universe. So now we're looking at Earth's geospace. So we gave you a brief look at the sun there. We'll go a lot more in depth into that. Here's the area around Earth in terms of magneto-hydrodynamic pressure, or nanopascals. This is the last four hours, and we do see a heightened solar wind speed here. So we've got a coronal hole high-speed stream currently arriving into the Earth geospace. And this is a model of what's likely going on out there to about 12 Earth diameters. So that was Earth's magnetic moment from space. Here's Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Geospace Delta B changes to Earth's B field. Ground magnetic perturbations scaled in nano Tesla. Those dark red areas are the most likely places to see aurorae, as well as induction into power grids, pipelines, and railways. Those are where the telluric currents are likely to be happening on the planet. And like the last video, that's the last four hours. We're seeing a little increase here, and we've also seen the BZ shift. We'll get to that next. Don't be surprised to see geomagnetic unrest or geomagnetic storm conditions commence once again here with a shift in the magnetic field. So there you can see we had about six hours of geomagnetic storm, which have quickly subsided because of a shift in the magnetic field. So going to the real-time solar wind, and here is the strong negative BZ signal. You can see there a strong field there of 14 nanotesla and a BZ of negative 10. That is a strong BZ signal that created a lot of induced currents, and that is what drove the geomagnetic storm. When it shifted back into neutral and then back to positive territory, well, that went away, but we may be able to be go back, we may be going back into geomagnetic unrest or storm here because you can see this strong BZ signal, a little bit of an increase in the magnetic field strength, the white line there, the BT, the total field. And we're seeing an additional pulse here, which is actually what I just forecasted. A two minutes ago on Twitch, twitch.tv slash smashomash, and there's another big uptick in the solar wind density. So this is an additional pulse here. We're seeing a second coronal hole high-speed stream pulse show up. This is the density wave typically preceding the high-speed portion. There you can see we made it all the way up to 40 kilometers per second, once again occurring right as we record the video. Also plasma temperature rising here, another indication that it's a coronal hole high-speed stream. <clears throat> Solar wind speed at the moment has dropped to 385 kilometers per second, all the way down from about 550. So there you go. A sudden shift. Also, the BZ has recently shifted back into positive territory. So that may be an indication that we won't see geomagnetic unrest conditions continue. We'll have to keep an eye on it. And when I say eye on, well, pardon the pun. So we're coming at you a little bit late today, as it is Sunday. So here are your GOES magnetometer readings, and you can see these sawtoothed, spiky patterns happening here. That's typical of coronal hole high-speed streams. Look for that to continue here for another probably 18 hours. And let's take a look at the heliospheric current sheet. Earth remains in a south pole current sheet. There could be a north pole current sheet snapping through here at any moment. Don't be surprised to see that occur. Let's take a look at the line of sight field plot. This one shows you the sun's B field in blue, solar polar fields in green for north and red for south. Also the solar magnetogram, only one sunspot group at the moment. It has been producing some C-class flaring. We'll get to it. First coronal holes. 
So there's your coronal hole line of sight plot. And not super well defined coronal holes at the moment. Here's the view from the NASA GO 16 SUVI in 195 angstroms. And that's the last two hours. You can see this flare happening right here. That was a C-class flare. Again, we will get to that momentarily. First, a brief look at sunspots. There aren't many. There are some having set over the northwestern limb here, but the main sunspot we've got to look at here is sunspot 3040. So there's some of the latest data from Udaipur, India. Filaments on the left and hydrogen alpha on the right. There are still quite a few filaments in the northern hemisphere, and there has been a coronal mass ejection. By the way, it is earthly directed. We'll show you that in a moment. First, the 94 angstroms view from the GOES-16 SUVI. Since we're lacking SDO data due to a power outage at Stanford University, we're showing the GOES-16 to show you some of the freshest images on the internet of the closest star. Looks like a little bit of flaring happening up here as well, perhaps. Right at the end, see a little brightening happening there. Could be the predecessor to a coronal mass ejection. Or maybe the coronal mass ejection is causing the flare. Next is the latest magnetogram imagery from El Taide, Spain. There's what's going on. Things have remained mostly stable here. Sunspot 3040 hasn't changed much in the past 24 hours. But it did produce at least one significant flare. And we'll get to that in a minute. First, the latest intensity grams from El Taide, Spain. And that sunspot looks like it's only alpha class at the moment. There may be some small umbrae around it. If it is beta class, it's barely hanging on to beta class. So the X-ray flux here, you can see having dropped over the past several days, and indeed the past week. And we did see a minor C-class flare happen there. A C2.29 was the magnitude of that flare. No relativistic particles showing up as a result of that. And here's the view from 284 angstroms. And again, you can see some activity happening up here. And we're going to get to the coronal mass ejection here in a moment. First, I'd like to invite all of you on YouTube to view us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Smashomash. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the Smash team at Smashomash.com slash Smash team. There's a gold and silver paid subscriber level there. And we yesterday we put up a podcast from Lex Friedman. That is only for gold and silver subscribers. Thanks again to the Smash team, especially those who pay us to create the content as we make just this side of nothing on YouTube. We created Smashomash.com in response to pathetic censorship on Facebook because in 2018, a crack YouTube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime we didn't commit. We promptly escaped a maximum security social media stockade into the internet underground where we survive as producers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find the content, maybe you can hire the Smash team. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Help us out by clicking our links, visiting our homepage, picking up some merch. Today's featured product is Universum Liberate. Now, there's no way, there's no better way to freak people out than by speaking Latin. So if you want to speak English, you can say Mensa, make Earth not suck again. Or if you really want to freak them out, speak Latin and say... Universum Liberate. It's the motto of the Galactic Federation Special Forces. So support change. Support individual liberty and freedom. By picking up some Universum Liberate products, check out the rest of them by visiting the links. You can find them below this video as well as at smashomash.com. I'm wearing the shirt. I'm doing my part to make Earth not suck again. And the Galactic Federation is, the Galactic Federation Special Forces is doing our part to make the galaxy not suck again. So take a moment to press like and subscribe. If you are a YouTube subscriber, press the share button. I'm not so sure the videos are getting recommended. YouTube claims they are, but I find it kind of odd as there seems to be a market for space weather videos. 
Why are we stagnating at 2,500 subscribers? Well, that is a mystery for the ages. Now, if you're up before dawn, you may see the planetary pileup that's been going on for months. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, the Moon, Mercury, all rising ahead of the Sun. It's a great day to be up before dawn. Tomorrow will be similarly great. Here's a solar system forecast. And we've got a crescent waning moon <clears throat> as we approach new moon. Here's the one week forecast for the solar system. Keep in mind that's not to scale. That's where things will be on July 3rd. We hope you are independent from nonsense on YouTube as there is plenty of it. The planets are still not going to kill you. By the 3rd of July, we will have a crescent waxing moon. So, here's a coronal mass ejection. It does appear to have an Earth-facing component, although most of it will miss to the south and west. Here's another viewpoint, as the view from Stereo A is quite spectacular. Stereo A is located at Lagrangian point 5. We'll also show the Soho Lasco C3 located here at Lagrangian point 1. So that's on the right, Stereo A here on the left. For you new viewers, from the perspective of Stereo A, Earth would be off in this direction. And when we, sh when we forward this, you will see a little bit of ejecta headed down the earthly line there. And if you move this forward, you can see a little bit of ejecta on the top of the coronagraph, an indication that part of that cloud of plasma is headed toward Earth. So we'll just let that play through there. So you can see that in its full spectral glory. Spectacular imagery there from Stereo A and from the Lasco C3. Let's bring that back once again, play that through one more time for you. So we do expect a minor coronal mass ejection impact from that. Not a major one, as again, most of the ejecta expected to miss to the south and west. Oh, one more bonus feature here. We're going to look at cosmic rays. I almost forgot about cosmic rays. So here is the apatite neutron monitor. This middle pane here, this is the last 30 days. And you can see quite a significant downtick over the past 30 days at apatite. At Barentsburg, a similar downtick in the past 30 days. Let's go farther south to Athens, Greece. Here's the Athens Neutron Monitor. A bit of a downtick there at Athens over the past 30 days. Let's go even farther south to Mexico City. There's a downtick at the Mexico City Cosmic Ray Observatory as well. Let's go back north to Olu, Finland. There's Olu, Finland. And the Neutron Monitor there showing a downtick over the past 30 days. And let's go as far south as we can get, Antarctica. And there you can see a downtick at DOMB Antarctica and a downtick at DOMC Antarctica. I would also note an uptick over the past week in cosmic ray flux. Notice how tightly correlated that is to solar activity. So there's DOMC, there's DOMB, there's Olu a little uptick in the past week, there is Mexico City a little uptick in the past week, there's Athens a little uptick in the past week, and there is Barentsburg and Apatite. So while they are down over the past 30 days, they are all up over the past week. If you think that's a correlation between plasma, well, where has all the plasma gone, folks? Where has all the plasma gone? Now, our gold members may already know what I'm talking about here, but unfortunately for you YouTube viewers, if you are not a gold level Smash Team member, you may not have the full story on that. You can get the full story at smashamash.com slash smash team. In any case, thanks for tuning in to our daily space weather video for YouTube. We appreciate your patronage. That's where we'll close things out. And I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash a Mash, hoping that solar wind remain at your back. <laughs>